Welcome to tutorial 14. So it often happens when you're making a larger work that you've got perhaps a set of actors that you use again and again in multiple scenes and trying to cut and paste those and move them around um, can be inconvenient and as well uh, sometimes you really don't need to see every parameter of every actor. So to help you deal with that situation Isidore has a feature called a user actor where basically you can construct your own actor and inside of it are several Isadora actors uh, and you can decide which inputs you want to see or don't see. So that's what we're going to do and to start with I've made this patch. It's important to know that this one uses a free frame plugins which are freely available from the Troika Tronics website so if you'd like to copy this make sure you've got the free frame plugins installed on your computer. So we've got a movie player playing this clip and a projector and I've got three effects here. Scanner, desaturate and glow, that's the free frame effect, and a video mixer so that I can decide whether I want to see the glow effect or not. So to let you see each of these, I've had the bypass inputs turned on on all of these and I'll turn them off one by one so you can see what they do. So this is what scanner looks like. It kind of gives a fantastic three-dimensional effect to the video based on its brightness. Desaturate does what it says, it takes the color out of the image and then right now the video mixer is set to zero which means I'm only seeing the top input so that's only the scanner and desaturate but if I turn the mix amount here up to a hundred now I'm seeing glow as well and if I put some color back into that image I think you'll see that you get a strong a little glowy effect around the image so Let's just say that that's a set of actors that I'm using repeatedly throughout my show and I'd like to turn those into a user actor. So step one is to go to group number eight and there you'll find the actor called user actor. I'm going to click on that. You'll notice it has no inputs or outputs so it doesn't look like very much. But what we're going to do is we're going to place these four actors inside the user actor. So step one is to select those four actors and choose cut. Now I double click on the user actor and when I do I get a new window. It says the name of the file here tutorial14.izz colon user actor. That's letting you know that this window belongs to the main file which is called tutorial14. And if I choose paste you'll see the actors that I just cut appear inside of that new window. So the thing is is that we want to be able to get video in and out of this user actor so to do that we need to add some inputs and outputs and I'm going to move this window out of the way for a moment because I want you to also keep your eye on this user actor down here. It looks like it did just a moment ago but you're going to see it change in just a moment. Click again on group number eight and when you're in a user actor window two other actors will appear that aren't in the main window that's user input and user output. So I'm going to bring in a user input and now make sure and take a look at the user actor. Right now it's the way it was but as soon as I click on this to put it into the scene all of a sudden our user actor has an input. That's because this user input that appears inside the actor is actually creates an input on the outside at the main user actor. So I'm going to connect that user input to the video inputs here but take note of this other factor. Right now the user input says zero. Now normally you can't hook a number up to a video input because they aren't compatible. But user inputs and user outputs are special. They will adapt to whatever thing you hook them up to and turn into that kind of uh, information. So if I make a link between the user input and this video input and click, you'll notice that now it says video here. That's because it changed from a number into a video stream because of me connecting it. Once it's connected it won't change any longer like if I try and take that video input and connect it to a number it won't let me because once a wire is connected then its meaning is fixed. But to make scanner work I have to actually put the video into both of these inputs so that's correct. And now I want to get a user output so I can actually see the resulting video after the effect has been done. So I click on the user output actor here again keeping your eye down here on the user actor. When I deposit this now you can see that it's actually grown and I have an output on that user actor as well. 
Same thing with the video out. I connect it and the user output changes into a video stream. Okay? So they're just called by default input one and output one, but if you'd like to change the name, that's easy. You can just double click the act the user input or user output. You get a dialog box. We're gonna call this video in. I just type that where it says property name. Say okay. User output, same thing. Video out. And you'll notice down here in the main user actor, the names change to reflect what I had typed into those boxes. So if this is all that we had to do, we might be done at this point. And then to close the user actor, you do like with any window, you go to the close box and click it. But you're going to get a dialog box when you do that with several options on it. I'm only going to talk about this main button, which is the default, which is save and update all. Basically, you're just telling it that you want to save all the changes that you made to the user actor. And we'll see that this actually has a imp uh, bigger important meaning in just a second. So I say save and update all. The window closes. There's my user actor. And I can take my clip, run it through here. And there it is. That's exactly what I had before. So one function of the user actor is you save a lot of space because obviously this is a much smaller little object than it was when I had all four actors spread out. That might be the only reason you use it is just to condense things into a smaller amount of real estate. But actually the real power of the user actor comes because of the fact of this notion of, of making uh, copies of one another. So to illustrate that, I'm going to take this user actor and copy and paste it or duplicate it. Then I actually have a camera hooked up and I'm going to take a video in watcher here, connect that up, and I guess just to be able to see it I'm going to move this image over to, the, to this side. I'll make a copy and paste this projector and we'll see this video on that side and I'll move that over to the other side there. So now there's my hand coming from the camera and you see the video being affected. So the functionality inside of there, I copy and paste the user actor and it's exactly the same. So now I have two actors that do that same function. But the real power comes when you start editing the actors. So I'm going to double click this user actor and let's say that what I'd like to be able to do is to control this mix amount to decide whether I see the uh, glow effect or not and also the saturation amount of the desaturate. So I grab two more user inputs. I connect this user input to the saturation. Double click it, call it saturation. Say OK. Connect this user input to the mix amount and I'm just going to call this Glow because that's the name of the free frame actor. Say OK. So now, and take a look again at these both these actors. Now this one up here that I've been editing has those two new inputs. This one is unchanged at this point. But if I click the close box and it says save and update all, watch what happens to the other one. It now also has a saturation and glow input because whenever you edit a user actor, all of the copies that you've made of that user actor automatically update so they're exactly the same. So now I can control on this one, I can turn the saturation to zero, but on this one, which is the live camera, I can leave the saturation turned up. And I'm going to turn the glow off on the live camera, but I'm going to turn it on or vice versa. I can turn the saturation up here turn the saturation down here. So now I have access to just the parameters that I would like to access. This tutorial continues in a second part where we'll show you more ways in which you can powerfully use the user actor feature.